Everybody, thank you for tuning in. All right, a uh, big shout out to Quick Trip sponsoring the podcast. And if you're going to the Packers uh, game this weekend, you're coming into town, you need us need uh, the hookup for the tailgate needs. Be sure to check out Quick Trip. They got the beer, they got the chips, they got all the stuff. They got the they got the bratwurst, they got the cheese, they got all the stuff you need to have yourself a proper tailgate. You know what I mean? But uh, let's get into this. All right, Packers, Eagles. All right. Didn't end how we wanted it to. Didn't uh didn't like the, the way this season, how I've been talking about the how I've been thinking it was gonna start, complete opposite. Uh everyone in the NFC North won except for the Packers. Uh and not only that, because the loss is like whatever. Uh there's a lot of stuff we'll talk about that. A lot of stuff that could be cleaned up and fixed. But uh Jordan Love, his MCO, it's not one of them. <laughs> it can't be fixed right now. But uh it's there's hopeful news though. There's hopeful news. Matt LaFleur actually said today, he said if, he said if Jordan Love isn't cleared medically to play, then it'll be M- Malik Willis. But he said he will, get, if he's cleared, he will give Jordan Love every opportunity to, to play. I don't think that's a real thing that's going to happen in this game or this week. I don't think it's a possibility. But I think Matt LaFleur is just kind of covering his bases where he's just like, uh, yeah, if he's medically cleared, we're going to get him an opportunity to play, but like, he's not going to be, but I think he's just, cause I think they don't know how long it's going to be. Like it could be three weeks, could be four. I, I can't imagine it's going to be any more than that. I think it's going to be two or three. Uh, just the way everything sounds, it sounds like everything is more hopeful now uh, than it was. But um, besides that, you know, I, I made a little reel on Instagram or whatnot uh, about, th- th- there was some good stuff that, c- that came out of that game. Let's talk about that real quick. And then we're going to talk about, can the Packers win with, Malik Willis. I think they can. I think they can. And I, I, I'm going to talk to you about some of these comments they got on Facebook and whatnot. But um, yeah, so, you know, the defense came out swinging, right? Um, They got some turnovers. I was just watching the recap here. Um, They got that big interception. Then they got uh, a bad snap on the Eagles, but they were able to jump on that thing. But what those situations should have been 14 points. You know what I mean? You got to score touchdowns. So you can't score field goals. And it's so, like, generic thing to say because obviously – but like you, you gotta at least get one touchdown there. Like, uh, especially when you're playing a team like the Eagles. Like that's the thing. Packers were they weren't playing some scrubs. That, that that was the Eagles, and that was in Brazil. It was tough for everyone. The field sucked for both sides. And not even that, all the extra stuff that was going into it, traveling and all that. Uh, but that that's for both sides. No excuses. Uh, but the point is, the Eagles are a good team, and they lost them. Whether you know Jordan Love got hurt or not, that that wasn't going to end that. Uh, whatever. Um, that wasn't going to change. The Eagles are a good team. They beat the Packers. Packers played them tough, uh, even with all the mistakes that they made and like just uh, the, the 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 rust. You know, Jordan Love was off in a few throws, uh, but there is some good stuff. Uh, Jaden Reed, he's nominated for Ground Player of the Game. Big run. They said that there's a stat. I wish I had it in front of me. Uh, I think I have it on my phone, but um, it was like uh, the only player I think since the merger to have. Uh, such a I shouldn't even say because I don't even know it, <laughs> but I know that it, it was a Packer one for sure from the 70s. That uh, first player with like a 70 yard run and uh, for a touchdown and uh, and so much receiving yards. I forget the exact number, but he did some, he, he, he had a big game, it was a career game for him for sure. And uh, uh, I do, I think, dude, Jaden Reed, everyone's been talking about Jaden Reed, he's gonna be special, he's he's gonna be huge for this offense this season. Uh, and and going forward, like, but uh, Jaden Reed, that's a name. You feel safe about getting yourself a Jaden Reed jersey. I got one. My wife got me one. Uh, before, you know, when he was just drafted, you couldn't buy him. She had to get it custom made. Anyways, <laughs> Jaden Reed, it, it is a real deal. Now, can they win with Malik Willis? Um, yeah, I think so. And like, I was gonna bring up the stats on Malik Willis, like his training camp or his preseason, but who cares? It doesn't really matter. 
Um, wh- what matters is the Packers had two quarterbacks in here. They they didn't that they, they didn't cut. They were like, no, you're out. And then they, they thought Malik Willis is a guy that that if need be can get thrown in. So you got to trust that he's got the skills. But here's the thing that I've seen from a lot of t- Titan fans, a lot of people talking about Malik Willis holds the ball too long, right? They say he holds the ball too long. All right, well then get the offense, uh, call plays, quick quick passes, screen passes, do things, uh, call plays, ways to help the quarterback. If he's going to hold the ball too long. Uh, and obviously coach Mumpley, hey, don't hold the ball too long, you know, get rid of that thing. But um, try to help him out, you know, uh, find out his strengths. And that's not like anything. Dude, Matt LaFleur knows what he's doing. I trust Matt LaFleur. I trust Matt LaFleur is going to have Malik ready uh, and this offense ready. Got to run the ball. Offensive line's got to play better. Um, you know, Got to get Josh Jacobs involved. And Josh Jacobs, I don't care how you get in the ball. Like the run game wasn't really working um, against the Eagles. That offensive line, you really didn't have a lot of, a lot of time, uh, a lot of room in there. But, yeah, they have to fix that. I don't care who you want to blame because I see people say Josh Jacobs, whatever. Uh, I don't care who you want to blame. They have to fix a run game. They have to be able to run the ball. They have to be successful run the ball, um, especially with all Jordan Love. And But they have to get other guys involved. You know, you got to get Jaden Reed the ball. Like all, all those handoffs, all, the, all those type of stuff you can do. And uh, you just don't ask Malik Willis to win the game. Don't ask him. You know, he's been on the team for like two weeks. It seems like, I don't know how long it's been, but uh, don't obviously don't throw the game in his hands, which I don't think they're going to do. They're going to be ready. Um, I think he, he can run. They say, you know, cause I actually asked AI about him. I wonder if I could find that. Cause I, uh, I asked AI if, uh, Oh, I did. I was arguing with AI this morning about, <laughs> about Aaron Jones. She said, Aaron Jones plays for the Packers. Like, he doesn't. He doesn't play for the Packers. I was sending the chat GPT screenshots because I'm like, dude, you should know stuff. <laughs> All right, see if I can find this. Okay, I, I asked uh, chat GPT, what style of quarterback is Malik Willis? They said, Malik Willis is primarily known as a dual threat quarterback. He has a strong arm capable of making deep throws, but is also very effective as a runner. He, his playing style blends physical running ability with potential for big plays through the air, making him a dynamic threat both inside and outside the pocket. Willis often uses his mobility to extend plays, evade pressure, and make throws on the move. However, he is still developing as a pass, particularly with the regard of accuracy and decision-making in the pocket. His skill set is well-suited for offense and offenses that want to incorporate a design quarterback runs and rely on the ability to make plays off script. So, um, yeah, that's not real great, you know, and obviously chat GPT, chat, chat GPT, they just get stuff off the internet. Uh, so that's the kind of what people are saying. Um, but yeah, I, I think that they just got to put them in, in ways to be successful and they know how to do that. You know what I mean? Um, they're, they're, they're going to coach them up and this defense, you know, the defense, what the defense did against the Eagles and which will be easier because the defense was playing a very good Eagles team. You know, the Eagles, they, they, they're not chumps uh, offensively. So, uh, but the, you want to see the defense do that all game long. Now I don't expect them to get six, seven turnovers game, but um, yeah, like stay on it. Like uh, get guys down. Like they're going to, especially with Jordan Love being out, like if the more turnovers, the better um, we'll find out, but um, I'm going to wrap this thing up. This ain't going to go too long, but I want you to know Tuesday night, Live Jimmy Christensen. All right. Um, we'll talk more about this more detail. I just want to get on here and ramble for a little bit. But uh, and, and then Thursday we have Ryan Schlitt from the Packernet podcast. He will be joining me. We'll be talking about next week's game, a lot about Malik Willis and like what this offense is gonna look like. And um, and uh, there you go. We got two live streams right there. And um, I might be live for the if you're watching this today or listening, watching, listening. Uh, it might be live tonight for Monday Night Football. I'm not sure yet. But I uh, appreciate y'all listening or watching or however you're doing it. Go Pack Go, baby. We out of this thing. Big shout out to Nick Lalo. You know what I mean? <laughs>